welcome back while Jesse is setting up for uh, the Manhattan version of the 1792 Bottle yes. and Bond. And somewhere on the screen is going to be the link to the Neat Pour review, which we still have a little bit left of. And spoiler alert, it did really well. Not going to tell you how well, but is it, it really did well. A, is it really a spoiler, though, if it comes on before this comes on? Well, if somebody hasn't seen it before well, they watch we it. we expect today. people to watch things in order. That's right. We're going to watch it at all. <laughs> Get out of our channel. All right. So, yeah. So, we're going to do uh, the 1792 Total Wine Store Pick Bottle and Bottle. Manhattan. Manhattan. So it's been a while since we've discussed the process of the Manhattan. So for people that are tuning in for the first time, why don't we go through what the uh, classic recipe and what it is we're doing. Yeah. So we're going to do one ounce of our enormous bottle of Martini Rossi Sweet Vermouth. And we do use the same vermouth in every cocktail we make. The idea in our process, for those of you who already know this, bear with us. But the idea is that we make each one of these Manhattans the same exact way, same ratios. We just swap out the whiskey and, you know, we're still on the same mission to figure out what whiskey makes the best Manhattan. Right. Yeah, so we make it exactly the same way every episode. Uh, we're literally just swapping out the whiskey. Yep. But the process is the same. So this is basically about as scientific as you can, you can get with uh, making a cocktail over and over again. Yeah, let's call it that. All right, so the, to the one ounce of vermouth, we're gonna add two ounces of our whiskey. So, yeah, it's a pretty standard two to one ratio, which is about as classic as it gets. Obviously, there's variations out there, but you know, that's what we do. There's many variations, by the way. All right, and we do four dashes of our bitters, and it's just the standard Angostura aromatic bitters. Nothing special, again, Variations call for different kinds of bitters, um, but this is our recipe. Okay. Okay. And nice. Do that. Stick your hand in your ice and pull out whatever whatever you need. So feel free to go crazy with how much ice you put in your stirring glass here because it's going to be served neat. Right. Or I guess technically it's served down. Well, and there, you know, there's, there's debate on the ice too about how what kind of ice you should use, blocks, cubes. We're using fridge ice because that's what we use. <laughs> there's no pretenses here. Right. Like, we're not bougie about well, and again, what we do. As, as long we as just we, like a good cocktail. Well, in our case, too, as long as we're doing it the same way every time, it really doesn't matter. That's right. Um, and we stirred. But like everything else, do it the way you want. Exactly. And we stir for 30, 30 seconds, by the way. Oh, that's right, we are split. Almost break your glass. Um, we've had some people question our um, cherry choice. Choi cherry choice. Cherry choice. Say um, that five times fast. We went, just like the fridge ice and the vermouth, we went with a readily available cherry. Well, um, this, th they're not, mer they're not. Looks hard. No, no, no. Well, yeah, they're not Luxardo cherries, but they're also not just like the neon, right, right. neon, whatever red yeah. color that is, maraschinos either. These are they're decent cherries, yeah. but they're not going to cost you twenty five dollars for a jar. And again, the, the the volume that we drink Manhattans, if we're putting in one of those two dollar cherries every time, is making making an ex a more expensive drink. Okay, so I'm going to take a sip of this again, real quick. Okay. Cheers again. Mm-hmm. Tasted just like it did five minutes ago. I'd still grade that as an A5. Mm-hmm. You, you, can, you can mute that out later. All right. I'm not muting anything out. No. It was supposed to be a surprise. I'm not supposed to. <laughs> there's no spoilers. All right. I can already tell I'm going to like this one a lot. It smells good. Um, you know, we like whiskey-forward cocktails, and... Anytime you have a Manhattan and you don't in immediately smell the vermouth first, mm -hmm. to me that's a good right. first initial impression. Yeah, I agree. It smells good. I mean, it smells like a Manhattan. You're not going to get any crazy notes. So, right. let's see how it tastes. Cheers. Cheers.
Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's a little on the sweet side, I think. It is. I think the I think that that 1792 is a little that, that right. whiskey on the in general is on the sweet side. I think for for me, this one actually may be better neat than it is in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. This is a pretty good Manhattan, but um, I enjoy this bottle neat more. I agree. Yeah, you know, there's nothing really remarkable about it. It's a good Manhattan. I don't really think that there's any crazy notes that translate into this. Right. Um, it's solid. It's good. So, score. I think it's probably in the sevens, seven range. High sevens. Which is surprising because it scored so well neat for it to be, you know, such... Right. Such a you know large disparity between right, which is the two, which is unusual for us because what we've seen is typically the ones that are really good neat are also really good in Manhattan. Yeah. All right, uh, seven five. Okay. All right, seven five. Easy is. enough. Seventeen ninety two. Uh, total wine store pick, bottle and bond. Manhattan review, seven five. There you have it. One sip. Nobody knows these fools. No Manhattan dying. <laughs>